This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and I'm continuing my series on 50 millimeter laminated steel padlocks with this lock, the Master Number 27. This is the first of two removable core laminated locks that I'll be featuring. And this one distinguishes itself from the field with a really thick shackle. This shackle is, let's see, a full 11 millimeters. Everything else in this field is eight and a half to nine and a half millimeters. So much larger shackle than comparable locks. And this one has a five pin core. So let's see what it takes to pick this guy open. I'm gonna use top of the keyway tension with a 40 thousandths pry bar. And we'll use a standard hook in 25 thousandths. Nothing from one. Click at a two. Click at a three. Nothing from four, click out of five, back to one. Okay, got her open. If you are paying attention, you'll have noticed that we did not pick pin number four at all. Let's take a look at that. That's a, a really high cut pin. It's actually the same as number one. So clearly we have driver pins that are too short and my guess is that we probably didn't have to pick pin number one either. But fortunately, this is a lock that we can take apart and take a look at the problem. But before I do that, let's rank this guy. We've got nothing but standard pins in here, so I'm going to rank it below anything with, um, with security pins. So that's gonna be below anything here, our Abus, Brinks, uh, Mr. No, American or smart key. Clearly it's gonna be above these plastic core Chinese locks and that leaves it with its brethren from master lock. Both of these are four pin locks. Both of them have the issue with driver pins that are too short. This shares that problem, but it's a five pin lock. So I'm gonna rank it above them. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's take this lock apart. Okay, I believe we can take this apart with a that one's a little bit too small. There we go, that does the trick. Okay, we got that guy out. And ah, this is a crimped in core, but we can probably take it apart by rotating the, the core, the crimp, so it lines up. Let me show you, give you a close up of that. <coughs> you can see we've got the crimp on the left side there. If we rotate the core so it lines up, the bottom of the keyway lines up with that crimp. Yep, we're able to take it out. Okay, and we're probably gonna have to do a reverse gutting because you can never get followers past that crimp. So let's see what we can do here. Actually, you know what? These are all standard pins. I don't really care how, what order they come out in. Okay, as suspected, all, all standard pins. And let's actually take a look at the issue with the driver pins being too short. Okay, I think it was number four that we had the issue with. Yep, and just for good measure, let's put one in number five as well so you can see the difference. Okay, let's zoom in here. When a driver pin is too short, what happens is when there's a key pin and a driver pin in the slot, it will still be flush with the core. As what it should be is like pin stack number five there with the key pin and the driver pin in, the driver pin protrudes up into the Bible and prevents the core from turning. Not so with number four, and essentially what that does is makes that pin stack entirely ineffective. And on this particular lock, 
I believe we had two of them that we probably could have could have avoided picking. Let me check number one. Yep, number one was the exact same thing. Very, very unfortunate. But I guess I'm starting to expect it in these locks. <laughs> Okay, let's dump all these pins out and I'll give you a close up if you have any interest in seeing a bunch of standard pins. Okay, got these arranged well enough. Okay, as you can see, all standards, nothing particularly unusual about it. That's all I have for you on the master lock number 27. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.